When the phone rings and I'm talking to somebody at that level, it's pretty special. The Audi brand name, when I heard that, I was like, oh, this is sweet. And they explained, you know, it's going to go in this glass box. And we're thinking, OK, what are these guys up to? And do they understand what we do? And as soon as we saw the mobile showroom, I knew we wanted to be a part of it. Uh, making the trees for the track, which uh, basically consists of uh, Japanese sedum flowers that we wait till they dry out. It, it, it's all about, you know, looking at it and, you know, does it look like a tree? You know, I think it does. And even though this part of it is really shallow, when it comes time to put it on the track, he'll be out like this. So, you know, it brings together that he's fighting for sunlight. He's fighting for sunlight, right. and they can you know, join together. Me making trees came out of a necessity to build the tracks to make them real, to create the value, which you know, got us to where we are today, where you know, five years ago, someone told me, oh, yeah, Dave, you're going to be making trees. When I was sitting in my 20 by 20 corner office with 20 people under me, I would have said, what are you talking about? Well, when I first you know, lost my job, I thought, I want to do something cool where I don't have the stress of someone on top of me. And uh, at home at night, you know, after looking through the want ads and hiring headhunters, I just wasn't getting anywhere. And I thought, I'd really like to just be my own person. And I had this vision of painting coconuts on the beach so I wouldn't have the stress of people coming to me and I could just paint a happy face on a coconut and here you go. So I always refer to you know, painting the coconuts as you know, hiding out from society kind of thing, but still getting enough money to take care of my family and having some fun. I cut out some pieces and I routed them in my basement and I painted them and uh, I went and talked to a hobby shop owner and said, hey, you know, I got this idea, you know, can I set up in your store? And he go, and he, you know, he said, yeah, that, that's cool. You know, he didn't really believe in it either. You know, that he told me that afterwards. He just said he felt sorry for me. You know, I can say, oh, we build slot car tracks. Oh, you do? People instantly think that they're plastic snap togethers, you know, foam and you know, plastic, just store-bought stuff. So when people walk through the door, it's, oh my God, I didn't think it was that big. Oh, geez, I didn't realize that, you know, you, you did wood. Oh, that's painted? When you see a track with none of the scenery and it's just painted and on there, it's a, it's a work of art in itself, because it's wood. And we bend the wood and we mold the wood and we get the right bankings. They're interactive works of art that not only are pleasing to sit and look at when they're operating, but when they're not. You can just kind of look at the detail and, you know, just there's always something to look at. We do sanding, painting, uh, carving, virtually everything the way it used to be done in the old days, the old fashioned analog way. I was in the automotive business actually. 
There's a lot of precision in automotive, but I, I like that here. So it's kind of precise and it's kind of artistic and uh, it, was, it was a good fit. It is model making, but it is craftsmanship. It's, uh, as I said, from years of experience knowing how to do it and what you can get away with and what you can't. We don't actually have any hobbies. We just do things that people think are hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> I knew my, my weaknesses, so I surrounded myself with people who can help bring what I had in my head to reality. And knowing that, okay, there's people that can do this for me, and we can all get to the same place at the end, which is, you know, a really kick-ass track. I love, like, puzzles, so something that, uh, something that needs to be completed and something that I have absolutely no idea how to do. So I basically drown myself in information about everything that has to do with the, with the project. If you're a geek inside, you're a geek inside, and it's fun to talk tech. The video feed gets fed into the router, 15 to 24 step custom batteries that have base bars. Uh, the router sends the signal to a pulse width modulator, so it just... Talking to him the night before, he was flying in. He says, okay, well, there's a couple more changes. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't even think I'm going to get to bed tonight. You know, he's running 150 miles an hour like we all do. We talk a little fast. You know, we all have that anticipation, of, uh, especially from the technology background of what could go wrong or <laughs> what could possibly happen here. Incorporating an iPad to control the speed of the car is, is what, they, what they wanted. Something that was usually like a wire and just a trigger. Um, to do that was a, was a great challenge and something that really made me rise to the game. To meet someone like Ali and, and everyone coming together to, to make something happen, I really didn't think was going to work. You know, these guys, oh, you can do iPad. Okay, it's going to be a challenge. But then when we got in here and we start to work through it, and, you know, Ali is still making changes on the fly, and he's, you know, we still are figuring out the cars because we're working outside the box. You know, there, there is no box here now. It's just, you know, what do we need to do to get it done? When uh, they asked about the loony and the ice, I, well, we, we referenced, they used that as a reference. What can be the special thing? I come back to the Quattro, and I said, all right, this is what we're going to do. I went into my box. I grabbed the Audi Quattro. I said, we're going to put this Quattro in the barn because, to me, it represents my uh, introduction in, into Audi and most of the people in North America because Audi came over with the Quattro, and they entered into the Pikes Peak race. And it's a race up the mountain. It takes take up to 22 minutes. And then in 1987, Walter Rawl came and just decimated the world record there by 22 seconds, which was kind of unheard of. And that there really um, brought Audi into the focus, you know, North America about who this brand, because now they could, you know, tote that, hey, man, we're Audi, we're, you know, we're here kicking ass. So that's how we came with the loony. So I thought, okay, we'll put it in the barn, we'll have the windows small, and we'll just kind of subdue light it so when people will kind of look, they'll say, well, you know, what is that in there? And maybe nobody will know, but I know it's there. And when I talk about Audi, I see the Quattro launching over a dirt road down in South America somewhere. It's just awesome scenery. It's really more of an emotional thing, like there's right times for me to carve and there's, and there's not. And, but when I'm ready to carve, Get the fuck out of my way. I got to do this and I don't care what else is going on. You're, you're telling me what you want, and that's fine, but I'm gonna give you what I see in my head. And when it's done, you're gonna like it, and you have to trust me on that.
you know the client is expecting a windshield but we've we've basically convinced them that you know putting a hole in it is a we need to do that you know so they're kind of sold on that initially we were gonna you know we we're gonna they wanted a windshield it's their car they don't really want to on us messing with it too much so if we cut the hole bigger or even one of the biggest challenges of this project was actually uh, was the the space constraints inside the vehicle so that's something that we've been working with to try to get around and sort of bypass and, and, and get around it. And these cameras are super sensitive, so I've already broken about three of these guys. How does David feel about them? Well, I've replaced them without telling him, so. <laughs> the kids who are racing, they're glued to it. They're not thinking about Xbox and all this modern day stuff because it's right there, you know. They can touch things, they can destroy things, but they're, they're racing and they're tuned out, and they're, but they're tuned in at the same time kind of thing, you know. That's all gone. And I've heard thousands of stories of sons and dads going to the corner place and racing. And that's cool because then they remember and they, they open up. And in a roundabout way, yes, you know, I'm preserving that and, you know, bringing it back and saying, hey, look, this still exists. This is still fun, you know, let's race. Some of these pieces are, are going to be around forever, and um, it may sound strange, but you know there's an intimate relationship with what you're doing in this track, and a lot of them are never seen again to the public. six hours you know, just smiles on her face you know and and that's the fun part of it and that's when people walk away and say hey that was a really good time it's more mystical it's it's more emotional than just you know tools and hammers and stuff like that it's more the passion kind of thing that comes out of me and that's what drives me and that's you know, that's where it all comes from it, it it's hard to explain I can't explain this I go back home and try to tell People, they won't understand it. Even when they look at a picture, they won't pick up the energy of what's going on. You know, I brought my wife and daughter up here to experience this with me because I, when I give birth and I put these on exhibitions, I'm always calling home and trying to fill them with the excitement and, you know, what I'm feeling. But I, to me, it's rewarding that I know when she's older, she'll be able to reflect on this and say, look what my dad did. And, and there'll be, it'll be very, a lot of, pr I think, a lot of pride. And even for myself, when we share this story, 10 years from now, you know, hey Madeline, do you remember when? And all the people. Those are the moments where she'll be able to look back and say, hey, this is you know, what my dad was all about. You know, he was a really cool dude, but he could be a real prick. But, you know, and he wasn't always happy. And I saw him cry and he shared these things in front of me. You know, but he took me to great places and experience and, and to meet people that she would never meet. And as she pursues her dreams, she can see what I did and say, wow, okay, I can do this. And, um, you know, Audi has solidified that for me. Yeah.